you know, I really don't want to toot my horn, but there are some times I feel like I'm just larger than life. Hey, get it? Larger than life? Get it? Yeah. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Whoop Just Does uh, Minecraft. That's my server play series, and this is episode uh, 6, I believe. Or sorry, 7. Yeah, 7. Oh yeah, we're just moving along here, aren't we? Whew. Anyways, uh, so today, we're going to be continuing on uh, taking care of that data center. That's my goal today. Um, I actually got a lot to do, and I actually want to get through it, if at all possible. So, that said, look at this, I love, this, I love these features. Eee, so cool. Anyways, <laughs> let's go ahead and get to it here. Um, well, first things first, do a little, little catch up on the uh, the server news. Um, uh, just I mentioned it uh, last episode. Uh, however, I just wanted to... Uh, oops, to my corner here. Um... I just wanted to follow up with that. We had some server issues. We were on a previous host, uh, specifically Creeper host, and just started to have some persistent problems with them and weren't getting any uh, assistance and resolution. Um, so we ended up uh, moving over to a new host. We're actually on Envy host now. Uh, we've gone through a break-in period, testing things out. There have been a few little, little glitches and whatnot, which is kind of expected, I guess. Um, more or less, the biggest issue has been the fact that uh, they, when we first got on board with them, they offer a, uh, a web hosting, and it's a whole whooping, you know, hey, if you have a Minecraft server with us, you get to have uh, web hosting with us as well, and uh, I and, uh, it was like a dollar extra kind of thing, so it was it was one of those things where it's like, oh, okay, sure, why not, um, but it just, it, it kept it kept downing a lot, sadly. Um, so that that issue there. I should go ahead and get my shears cleaned up there. Does that work? No, you don't do shears? Oh, bummer. Anyways, uh, I think we've got an arcade machine now. <laughs> I love it. Arcade machine in the laundromat. That, that's, that's brilliantly done, by the way. Love it. Um, yeah, so the, it, the, the we had some drops in our, our website. So if you're trying to get on to the website, uh, I apologize. Um, but it's fixed for the most part. We're, we're still kind of, well, technically we're on evaluation, but it's still, you know, kind of keep our eyes open to make sure nothing else happens. Uh, <laughs> uh, beyond that, um, we've also uh, uh, gotten all our domains rolled over, so all the, we have all the uh, proper things working right for us in terms of... Uh, 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 instead of having use IP addresses, we can actually get the things we want to get to without any issues. So, officially, like I said, we're kind of out of out of testing and doing okay now. But uh, you know, things things happen. It's the way things are. Uh, anyways, uh, server news wise, uh, we've done a few things here. Uh, <laughs> I just saw right in the beginning here. I've uh, created a couple of maps. Uh, the first one being uh, this right here, which is our uh, um, world map of our area. For this city here, um, of course, anything I touch, VSD likes to come in and <laughs> go ham bone on. I love VSD very much, but she has a habit of uh, coming in and going crazy. And uh, we had a conversation about, uh, you know, totally cool, like like going ham bone things. But uh, if it's about this project, just ask them first. Um, I had originally done this this little area right here, and then she started expanding out. She got uh, the forestry town and thing in. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I like that idea, but it's one of the things of I'm all down for a whole world map in here, which would be epic, absolutely epic. Um, but we may have to move this whole panel system down, depending on how far out <laughs> west, east, north people go. Um, but anyways, if you look right here, um, it's, it's a vanilla map trying to render colors that it doesn't understand. So, like, the red rocks around here, for example, all come up in as gray. But you've got the uh, Skeezy Motel right here. You've got the workshop, uh, my little tiny house right there. Yankee's Place. Uh, we're actually standing... Where are we at? Right about... Right about here. 
uh, right there. There's a little square. Um, there's uh, City Hall, the power plant. Uh, over here, we've got the uh, data center, the Bowtie building. Uh, there's a new building over here. This is uh, Bar Rocket uh, Industries, some of the VST setup. And then we've got uh, Ruark's place over there. We're going to go visit today. Uh, so, yeah, so I got that, uh, got that set up. Um, to kind of zip over this way here. Uh, we also do some terraforming. Um, actually, let me pop back the map real quick. We started terraforming the uh, bay. Uh, VST and especially Seshi have been uh, helping out. Seshi popped on to a little work. Um, we're actually just kind of cleaning up the bay coastline, uh, making it a little neater and nicer, getting rid of a lot of stuff. So all these little islands, like this right here and this right here, are all going to go bye-bye. Plus I've done some extreme work, so I've actually carved out this area right here and make a little goon. And I'm actually going to be kind of, see, I'm actually going to be cutting all this out and connecting into this river here. This is the river that actually loops back and through that really cool uh, canyon, that bridge, and it actually goes over to Rurok's place. But I want to have a little connector to our bay. And if you look up the top here, um, remember from uh, a couple of videos back, I showed you the bridge when I did the bridge work for the uh, train right here. Uh, it used to have a bigger uh, like red um, lush desert area along here. You can see the remnants of it right here. I actually went ahead and went through and cut all of that out all the way back here up into the hill and stuff. I actually just went ahead and got rid of it. I wanted to have the uh, the crags um, a little harsher, <laughs> so to speak, make them look more barren. So I wanted to get rid of all the red from the lush uh, desert. So we've done a lot of that. I've also done some uh, river clearing over there as well. Um, a couple of updates on the uh, power plant here. Uh, first of all, um, such so a thing upon herself to make sure that we stay safe. <laughs> so we now have the uh, the uh, mandatory warnings here. Pop 65 warning. The state of California uh, contains one. This uh, acknowledges this. <laughs> the state of California contains one or more of the uh, chemicals known to the state of to this place. I don't know much what's that. And, uh, no, contains one or more chemicals known to the state of California to, <laughs> to cause cancer. God cannot. You know what? Here, there's a sign. There you go. <laughs> so that was the addition by uh, Sesh. Uh, also, uh, VSD came across a cute little trick here. She has figured out that the uh, Buildcraft gates actually have the ability to do a check for needs maintenance. Um, so they're actually monitoring these uh, turbines here. She also learned that these particular turbines can actually be repaired. So you can actually use uh, turbine parts. Uh, to repair them or replace them. So she went ahead and set up some lighting on here to notify us when those are um, uh, when those are in need of service. Um, look at those things. I also have a project to get these things cleaned up. Uh, I'll probably get to it next time. Maybe we'll see. <laughs> it's a lot that needs to get done around here. Still got our, our four little boilers, uh, solid and otherwise. Um, oh, good God! Now is she done? She turns into a break room. <laughs> Damn it. This is supposed to be a clean room, but I guess it's a break room now. <laughs> I love it. It's, it's just epic. <laughs> oh my dear God, you can actually buy. <laughs> Oh, that's so... Oh, yeah, by the way, this this is uh, the uh, Vending Machine Blocks uh, mod. And you can actually put items in. You can see here, they're s selling uh, uh, potions in exchange for IC token. We did uh, enable IC token. I think I've said this before. Um, so we actually have a currency system. Uh, we're still kind of implementing, if you will. But nevertheless. <laughs> so we got that. We got uh, BRG Industries here. Look at that. Some pretty cool lettering. This is actually... For, uh, Lettering is actually courtesy of the carpentry mod. It lets you do angles. Uh, so if you have to put this together, the focus of this place is actually uh, she wanted to do some automated uh, smeltery work, uh, specifically things like you know, she's doing some work on the roads. Those uh, road pavers are real pain. That you know what? Because you got to put in uh, gravel and add uh, like tin or something to it. So you know what? This is an easy way to do it. So um, she went ahead and got got that put together. So you can see a few different smelteries. Really nice job, and the, the the look of it's really neat. She's got, uh, as you can see here, again those carbon tree uh, mods on the backside here, um, and from the outside I like the look of it. Even top side looks good. So you got the 
very industrial looking stacks coming at the top, which is really cool. <laughs> um, oh, so uh, uh, Ruark, uh, I talked about before, needed to get power over to his place. So we got him set up. This is just a down and dirty uh, system. Had to take a little refinement, but it's basically it's just enough to get him get him by for now until we get a, a official logistics in. So basically the trains are going to come in. I have a little whistle here. <laughs> I like the little whistle tracks. Uh, this is a speed uh, adjustment, what they call a limiter track. So when it's active with redstone, as you can see here, it's actually going to drop the speed of the locomotive down to its slowest speed. They have four speeds total. Uh, well, four is a figurative term, but anyways. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then once it gets to here, you got these control tracks that push everything forward. We talked about this with uh, Yankee on the uh, test server uh, walkthrough. And then this right here is a locomotive track, and this actually turns the locomotive off. This way, when it's sitting here waiting to get powered back up or get filled up, it's not running the system and wasting energy. So it comes in. We have a MFSU cart that comes in with it. Um, it sits on top of... Uh, uh, this guy right here, this is plugged directly into, of course, the power plant. This is, charges up the MFSU cart. And at the same time, it's going to go ahead and top off the train with some coal, which we're pulling from the AU system. And then these push forward. This turns the locomotive back on, and again, back on slow. Comes back around here. Go ahead and get itself topped off with some water. And then when it heads on out, it comes back over here and... Uh, just a, apparently we added a thing down there, but basically it gets turned back on and turned up to full. So that takes off on the tracks there. Um, since we're talking about Ruark, <laughs> we'll go ahead and run over his place real quick. Uh, I've taken it over there once before, but I just wanted to show you what's what's going on. Um, again, if you don't uh, if you don't follow his channel, I, I do recommend it. Actually, he's got some uh, fun builds going on. Uh, he found uh, uh, Stronghold one of his last uh, two episodes ago, I guess one episode ago. Uh, he found the Stronghold, um, so he's been digging around by, around. Eh, out and about in that area. Um, I actually came over and helped out, again, for the uh, power logistics. Uh, a little bit of tweaking he did, but uh, basically got set up. So the train comes in, same exact concept as before, slows down, and then gets disabled, and the, the uh, control tracks push the whole train forward. And as you can see here, we've got a, uh, a battery cart, a battery box cart with an MFS unit. And as you can see, as he's using the power, it's draining it out of here. This is tied into his system, this little compound over there. And uh, it's just going through and uh, basically supplying power for him. So when this empties out, it will release, push the car forward. Train will get topped off again with some, uh, I think he's using uh, coal coke? Yeah, some coal coke. And then uh, uh, topped off some water here. This is actually hooked up to a, uh, a, a Railcraft water tank. This is a self-filling uh, water tank. So it's a 3x3x3. Three by three by three. Looks like a classic uh, wire tower. And you can hook up a uh, dispenser to it and fills up the things. It's really nice. Very slow to fill up with water, but what's nice about it is for what it does for speed, that's usually good enough for a locomotive or two. So that's pretty good right there. So that is uh, the current news here. Um, that's basically I think that's everything we've kind of touched on for since the last time we talked. Um, oh, I did want to show you uh, uh, stuff I did on the test server. I actually did a little clip on the test server to just make things a little easier. We do uh, host a community test server. Um, I also did a little map for Rook, just a little gift to him. Um, we did a little uh, test server for uh, we host a little test server so that way people who want to do community builds or, or test stuff like when me and Yankee work on the Railcraft we have a community place we can go to um, so link, we've got, I'm going to go ahead and hop over there and we'll check it out and then we'll head over and do our project alright so we'll be right back hey guys welcome back to the test server uh, I remember last time we were here we actually were over at the uh, Railcraft area and I was showing you around the uh, work that me and Yankee had done uh, so we're back on the server again, and uh, I just wanted to show you real quick what I've done here. Um, it's not a real visual thing, so to speak. However, what I've done basically is I've set up the uh, test server with some, uh, uh, basically a, a greeting area, if you will. This is uh, our spawn point right here. And then you'll see around me I've got uh, these areas right around here. And they're basically different areas we can go to. So there's the old area we were at. Woo! Oh, <laughs> uh, this is the only area here that was the uh, uh, Railcraft location and uh, kind of the old build site. Let's put that sign back, shall I? Yes. Yes, we shall. Um, and so basically what I've done here is... 
I can't spell today. Real craft. Um, I split things off a little bit. And the reason for that is... Uh, is I want to try to get things split up. Our, our test server is a very low powered in terms of, you know, streaming and, uh, or sorry, bandwidth and whatnot. So I want to have everything packed into one place. It's just going to cause problems and a lot of lag. If somebody comes over here and wants to do some test builds, say, for designing a, uh, a building or something, you don't want to have it lagged up because somebody's got a lot of stuff running in one area. So I've gone through and I've done the, I have the original place here, and then I've got uh, uh, power gen. Let's go over here. We've got uh, uh, tests. We've got miscellaneous, uh, building design, magic bees, etc. Um, and you'll notice I've got like little icons here, so to speak, to make it look nice. Now I did this with command blocks. I have the command blocks uh, triggering with a secret pressure plate. Secret pressure plates will um, kind of take on the look of what they're near. So, like in this case here, what I did is I actually hit some. Uh, crafting or some uh, chanting benches under here and so it took on that look same thing with the uh, B for bees and trees I got the uh, apiaris chest um, this one is actually <laughs> this is actually my uh, uh, my son's request this stuff here is actually um, uh, some weird stuff from Twilight Zone <laughs> Twilight, Zone. <laughs> Twilight uh, Forest um, it actually as you can see updates when there's a block update it changes different stuff here uh, but anyways they're just that they actually are just pressure plates or secret pressure plates except for this one this is actually on top of a secret pressure plate I got some plans for that too and that way whenever you uh, step onto them um, they take you to the different areas so pretty straightforward and of course I got a little return spot here so people can jump back to the spawn location uh, now these are all spaced out uh, a thousand blocks from each other and they're actually spaced out or especially they're in the same orientation as you see here so from spawn spawns right in the middle a thousand blocks north you've got real craft a thousand blocks uh, east you've got miscellaneous and so on so they're spatially correct in that regard so again they're all about a thousand blocks apart that way if you want to go over and do some design work you're not going to end up loading these chunks here so don't have to worry about it so that's a nice little little thing to have um, in addition to that, what I also did, I set up an additional wall here, and this is actually personal space. As you can see, we've got RG, Bunny, Heather, and so on, all the way down the list is all the active people we have on our server. And the idea is these places right here are kind of your private space, if you will. It's a just, you know, courtesy that we're not going to go into these locations unless somebody says specifically we can. Uh, that way, if like, say, for example, uh, me and Yankee want to get together and do some collaboration work in secret for a surprise for somebody, or if me and Turgo want to play a prank on Bunny, we can actually go to our area and do the test build on the server together so we can do collab work and we're not going to have somebody accidentally stumble across when they're out and abouting. Now these particular private areas are 10,000 blocks from each other. So for me, uh, I'm 10,000 blocks away from anybody else and then likewise we're all 10,000 blocks away from this primary location here. So just a little privacy. I just want to show that to you real quick. I thought it was kind of interesting. Again, this is a great layout. If you have a public server, even for a, or especially for a creative server, since it's going to become very heavy and intensive with uh, machinery and whatnot, this is actually a great way to get things around. This is sort of uh, uh, kind of a takeoff from a design uh, that uh, uh, Exumavoid did. We just got a little push button for different platforms. Same exact concept. It's just simply I just use pressure plates instead and uh, I have moved things further apart again so they don't have load issues. So that's pretty much it there. Um, I'll probably be revisiting uh, the test server again sometime soon here. I've got a lot of test build stuff I want to do. Oh, one thing I do want to show you real quick. <laughs> um, <laughs> you want to talk about some fun here? Boop. See if this thing still works or not. Turgo was putting it the other day. Do we have anything left in here? Well, we do. This thing does not like me. Turgo says it works. I never see it work. Oh, there it goes. Yay, it's a chicken spawner. And come on, guys. Come on, work, 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 work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I find this inappropriate and amusing. Oh, uh, I actually have some plans to uh, do some mini games uh, utilizing this uh, 
a chicken generation technology. So uh, that's that'll be coming down the pipe here. That's actually related to our game world we're going to be setting up. Anyways, so let's go ahead and hop back over to the main server and we'll head over to the data center and we'll go ahead and get started on our project for today. Uh, back with you in a minute. All right, guys, welcome back. So I'll go ahead and get started on. Uh, this project here. Uh, remember last time we talked about big data, got all the servers set up here. That's nothing's changed, <laughs> nothing new there. Um, I went ahead and added a uh, crafting monitor terminal over here just so I can see what's going on. Um, the other thing uh, I, I want to end up doing is getting this place cleaned up, this office space here, and actually put like the crafting terminals and stuff like that in here. A little more cleaned up in that regard. I may take things like these things right here. Um, Remember, these are the uh, I.O. ports for uh, doing, like, defragging stuff. I might move them, like, into here or something like that. Um, but today, today, we're going to get taken care of this side. And this is our Big Mac system. Uh, basically, this is the crafting capacity of the uh, uh, Applied Energy Logistics mod. Um, I, I, I picked up the term Big Mac from Bevo. Um, basically, a Mac is a... Uh, molecular assembler chamber and basically what it is is the ability for the system to learn how to craft things usually like in a crafting bench um, or through other means which we'll get into later and that way when you go into your terminal here if there's anything you need that isn't already made like this right here it says craft then you can craft it so anything that's a uh, kind of like I said it's a, an assembly table or a crafting table recipe um, you can then Basically, that's all I want to do. Um, you can basically ask at the crafts. So like, for example, I've got MU pattern providers here, uh, containment walls, etc. And you just say, oh, I want 64, begin. And it'll start going through and creating them. And then, likewise, as things are being created, you can go to the crafting monitor here, and you can see the crafting monitor making the pieces it needs and fulfilling the order. So, really neat system. So, we're going to get started on that today. <coughs> And we're going to go through. Now I've went ahead and got at least some of the stuff I need already kind of cleaned up here and ready. A um, lot of stuff you need for this. So I figured I'd get a head start on it. Uh, there are a few key components here. Uh, Big Mac is basically made up of uh, your assembly wall, containment walls, your heat vents, and then inside of it you're going to have crafting CPUs and pattern providers. So as you can see here, I've kind of done a little test layout to see how things would look and fit. And we're going to have some Macs up front. They're smaller and shorter than some big ones up in back here, a little bit taller. Um, as I said before, I'm going to be doing basically kind of split it up so that different Macs take on different uh, uh, mods. Now I've only got room for 15 Macs total. Uh, so I can't obviously have an individual Mac for every single mod out there, but I figure I can go ahead and do some of the, the mods that have a lot more extensive uh, recipes to them, uh, back side where the taller ones are, and then front side some of the more simple ones. So go ahead and get this cleared out of the way here. Um, so to start with, we need to go ahead and build our frame here. Now, a Big Mac, like I said, it's because of a few different components here. And it is important that when you build these, first of all, that the uh, outer shell uh, corners and sides are made up of these containment walls. Oops, that's all I want to do. So we're going to get those put up there real quick. Ta-da! I'm going to put these up here. Now, Macs can be any size or shape minimum of a 3x3x3. Three by three by three. So you have to have at least a 3x3x3, three by three by three, but from there, you can have any size or shape you really want. There is no theoretical limit to them that I'm aware of. Um, I'm not sure if there's a possibility that the game will freak at a certain point, but nevertheless. Uh, so in this case, what I'm doing is I'm doing the, the minimal 3x3, three three, and then I'm stacking them up high for what I need here. Now we're going to go ahead and put a CPU in these, and then I'll go ahead and put a couple of, uh, of these patent providers. Now, these patent providers are effectively, uh, well, basically they're 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 a page worth of space to put patterns into or crafting recipes into. And I'll show you how to make those in a little bit here. So for every one pattern provider, you get one page worth of room. So there's two pages worth of room. The CPUs themselves help the process go faster. So the more CPUs you have, 
the faster it goes. So in this particular case here, this guy right here, you have to have at least one pattern provider, but you can have any combination thereof between the pattern providers and the CPUs themselves, uh, depending on how you want to go. So if I put two CPUs in, I have less space, but this guy build faster. So that's kind of how that works. For I'll get these filled up later. For now, I'm going to go ahead and get finished up here, and bloop, there you go. So there's one Mac down and four billion to go. <laughs> um, again, if, if you're playing modern Minecraft and you haven't dealt with uh, AE, um, definitely give us some love. Check it out. There's a lot to it. I'm definitely going to be showing a lot more in terms of this mod and some of the stuff it has. There are actually a couple of things I haven't made yet. And there are actually some tools um, that one freezes and one heats. Um, definitely want to make those. I'm going to see if I can get this made sometime soon here. I'll show you guys how to make them. Um, there are some other elements to this mod um, that are available now in our version and later. Um, it's basically, it's a uh, teleportation chamber, if you will. Uh, if you have like two very remote locations um, being uh, basically like, you know, 8,000 blocks away or whatever, uh, there is no wireless system that's going to reach that far for an AE system. So it becomes kind of difficult. So what they did is they added the ability to... Uh, um, send information long distance or across dimensions. Um, now again, as I said many times before, we don't have uh, teleportation enabled for our server of any sort, so we don't use that. But it's a neat system, and I think I think it's nice because a lot of, a lot of servers do do that. A lot of people do like teleportation. Again, I am not opposed to it. It is you know a nice feature, but the fact of the matter is is Again, it takes away from what we're trying to do here in terms of logistics, so we just don't use it. Uh, so that's just kind of things are. Um, but definitely, like I said, try this out. The other thing, too, that's really nice is AE is a great mod with other mods. It works well with other mods. Specifically, uh, there's some old schools that like logistics pipes, and logistics pipes are fun to play with. And this mod really is kind of intended as a... Uh, in, in, in addition to those pipes in the sense that they play well together, it's really designed to work or play nicely with the uh, logistics pipes. They're not meant to go head to head. They're not, you know, the, the modders don't hate each other, anything like that. Um, so it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing to add, kind of a value add to anything. And uh, <laughs> you can have anything you want here. You can come up the, the terminal and grab anything that's in the system or order it uh, if you need it. Yeah, would you like fries with that? <laughs> uh, it's a great system. I Come to think of it now. <laughs> Has funny idea to actually uh, do something silly like uh, make a uh, uh, interface system somewhere in town and uh, kind of set up, make it look kind of like a McDonald's or something with uh, like, you know, value meal <laughs> terminals and whatnot. Um... Another thing I do like about this too is it also has some other features. Uh, it's got a uh, terminal window, I think it's called, or something like that, where basically you can see <coughs> uh, different items um, and kind of see what, what status of them are in terms of how many we have. Um, so that's another new kind of feature to have. So, oh, that's already, already looking good. I like that. Okay, i uh, tell you what, let me go ahead and uh, run through and get the rest of these finished. I still need to run the wire over to these guys, and uh, I'll pop back in after I get all these guys in, alright? User joined Bye. your channel. Alright guys, we're back, and we are done! Yay! Look at that. That is, that is actually a really neat... I am... I really like this. I'm actually this has actually made uh, given me a whole new appreciation for this building that I did not have before. Uh, I like the look of it and the, the big windows and everything. Um, actually, Ceci commented she she really likes this building. Um, that makes me that makes me happy. I'm glad to see that people appreciate it. Uh, again, I it, it was yeah, I'm gonna work on it. It, it. it has kind of a it feels like a 50s theme to me. So I'm gonna uh, look up some uh, pictures of, like, 50s-era uh, office buildings when I have a chance to try to get some inspiration to tweak this and, and, and trick it out a little bit. Um, just make it look a little better. Um, as I said, we uh, got all the Macs put in, 15 Macs in total. 
including the, the big boys in back here. Um, I love, I, I really like how they turned out, and uh, uh, it's kind of neat. Uh, as I showed you earlier, we have the pattern providers and the CPUs inside. Again, the CPUs are the speed versus uh, pattern providers being the space to add recipes. Um, I did only do one CPU uh, per on the first couple of front ones, and I've got like two in the back here per. I may change that around. Most likely, I probably will. At least to start with, I'll put more CPUs in for speed. And if I really need the space, I'll end up uh, pulling CPUs out and sacrificing the speed for space. Um, so I'll look into that. I'll just give you guys a quick little, little look-see look on how this works here. I'm going to go over to my ME pattern encoder. And the way this works, basically, is you get your ME Blake pattern. And you throw it up here. And then you go ahead and make what you want to make here. So, whoop. We're going to go ahead and make a boat. And you'll see it encodes. And then you have yourself crafts one boat with five oak planks. So once you have that pattern, these patterns can go in one, one of... Uh, uh, okay. Night, night. It's actually early for VSD. <laughs> She's very much a night owl. Um... We have this little. We have these little pattern, uh, these encoded patterns. There's going to be one of two places they're going to go. One, of course, is in the Big Max here, uh, which is again just like anything that's a kind of a crafting bench type crafting recipe. That's what you do. So you open them up, you throw your crafting thing in here. And you'll see it looks just like a, a little uh, boot now. A boot. <laughs> so now this is in the uh, uh, molecular assembler chamber. You will now be able to go over to doo -doo -doo, any crafting terminal or access terminal. And we'll go ahead and put it in our BOAT. And you'll see right here it says craft. So we click on that. So I want 64 BOATs. Begin. And if you look at the crafting uh, monitor here, you'll see it going through and clearly crafting them. Now, if this thing were a more complex recipe, you actually would see all the stuff that it needs to create here. So... For example, if you're creating an item that has multiple tiers of buildup to it, so if you have to build, you know, object A, so you can build this object B, you'll actually see them appear there. And if there's any materials missing, you'll see materials missing down here. So that is the way the system works. Pretty straightforward. Uh, the uh, pattern encoder here when you create those patterns another possibility that you can use those for is in the actual ME system themselves I'll probably give you two or some other day and show you how those work uh, but there's a lot of different ways you can uh, utilize those so that is a system uh, so we're, we're done functionally this thing is all kinds of happy ooh, that's kind of a neat look happy cool awesome I need to do a little bit of lighting here because I know some mobs are hiding out that has spider up on top there Spider surfing the web, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> Cheap jokes. I love it. Uh, I did go ahead and move the control, uh, ME controller over here uh, just to try to avoid issues. We're having some problems with the ME controller being far away, uh, possibly somewhere along the line, possibly like, getting unloaded or something. I'm not sure exactly what's going on. We have chunk loaders. So I just went ahead and moved it over here since the majority of stuff is over here. And then basically we've got an ME line going back to the workshop. Um, for those of you who are familiar with uh, ME systems uh, or AE systems, uh, <laughs> check out the power uses there. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> this pretty much means I have a dedicated uh, uh, Railcraft Turbine Plus <laughs> just to keep this thing running. This is absurd. This is by no means in any way, shape, or form efficient. Don't get me wrong. I love making things all cool and skippy efficient and all that. But this is this is all about aesthetics. You know, I mean, when I start getting the rest of these uh, drive bays filled up with drives, it's going to suck even more power. I'm, I'm scared to see what we'll get up to. <laughs> Oh man! All right, so that's uh, that's it for now. Uh, again, we still need to do some uh, design work here, uh, outside and in. I'm gonna get a floor put in. Figure what I'm gonna do with this office. Uh, I am likely going to change out this uh, ethereal glass for like security doors of some sort. I do want to get us to a point where the AE system here is a privatized AE system for the founders and uh, you know a few select people that have helped us get set up on the server here. Uh, it, it's not trying to be greedy or mean or anything like that, but just like with you know, any other types of uh, servers, you know, when you come onto a server, the, the idea is you have to have fun in building up 
your your reserves. So we're going to basically close this down and make this private, and then people can come in. This also help promote commerce, so people can actually uh, uh, get those IC tokens and actually create commerce systems. Uh, like, you know, visti has got her little business over there. She's starting. So that is it. Uh, upcoming uh, stuff we have, just so you guys know, I am going to be uh, doing some recording with Ruark hopefully soon. Uh, we're going to be uh, working on uh, extra utilities. Uh, he found himself a divi division sigil, and uh, I'm going to be... Show them how to do that, so that's going to be fun. I'm also going to try to get some record time in with the new, new guy. Do the the, 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 the welcome to the server thing and uh, get him settled in. I'm also going to try to hook up with uh, Bunny Foo Foo and uh, work with him. He actually wants to break ground on a project he wants to start, which is uh, uh, a trailer park. Right, uh, right next door to the uh, Skeezy Motel. So <laughs> we're going to have a little kind of slum over there. <laughs> so lots, lots of good things coming up. Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, that's it for now. As always, guys, uh, please, please, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Um, those comments really do help me out because, uh, A, I like getting uh, feedback from people. And again, I'm... I, I, I'm I got thick skin. I've I've got you know I'm 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 a I'm an understanding guy. I can take I can take a few hits if you gotta get it off your chest and be mean about it. You know that's that's your life and that's fine. Uh, but I do appreciate the input, good or bad. It helps me grow, and that's the kind of comments I'm looking for. If you have input about the video itself, great. If you have questions about what I've been doing in here, if you see me with something in my hand that you have no idea what it is, like a mud ball for example, uh, feel free to ask. I'm happy to answer questions for you. Uh, my balls, by the way, I just found out tonight. Give you slowness. <laughs> I'm going to have fun with these. Anyways, <laughs> so please do leave a comment down below. And as always, please, if you like this sh video, please leave a like down below. It really helps me out. It uh, gives you a little promotion, which is nice. Uh, it also helps uh, give me an idea of what you're into so I can make more of it and uh, try to improve on things. And as always, if you enjoy this type of show, if you enjoy the how-tos and whatnot, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. I'm always happy to uh, see more people hop on. I like to get a nice big collective that I can uh, hammer with questions when I want to figure things out. Uh, and just, uh, you know, in general, uh, I have a nice dialogue. <laughs> so... Uh, also, just so you guys know, I am going to try to do a little more in the way of the Twitch live streaming now and then. Um, if you're into sitting back and watch kind of more of a laid back uh, uh, environment, I do try to do Twitches now and then. I will try my do my best and my due diligence to uh, give you guys a heads up either via a quick YouTube uh, announcement or at least at the very least uh, on my uh, Twitter account, which is Warp Jester MC, or on my Google Plus or Facebook's account, which are the Warp Jester Gamers. Uh, sorry, Warp Jester Gaming on both uh, Facebook and uh, uh, Google Plus. Um, so I'll try to make sure to, to post them there. And of course, uh, I always keep uh, everything up to date on the uh, Ball Rocket Gaming forum. So you're certainly welcome to pop in there. It's actually a great place to uh, meet and greet all the people on the Ball Rocket Gaming server uh, and get to know them. Uh, we do like to talk to people and so uh, if you post questions there and say hello we'll be happy to say hello back so again thank you as always I appreciate your time and I will see you next time bye <laughs>